This is Apple's newest iPad Pro and this is their iPad Pro from seven years ago. Let's see what's changed and watch till the end because I actually noticed something really interesting. So first, let's talk about the design. When you look at these three iPad Pros, you can tell that the biggest design change was made from the 2017 to 2020 iPad Pro. Just with the squared off edges, USB-C, new camera bump, it's just an all around more modern design. And coming with that, they removed the auxiliary port. Thanks, Apple. But from the 2020 to 2024 iPad Pro, they actually didn't change that much besides making it a little bit thinner, a little bit upgraded camera bump, but the design stayed mostly the same. So for the weight and size, the oldest iPad Pro is the thickest and heaviest, and the two newer iPad Pros feel about the same, except the newest one has a thickness of five millimeters. That's crazy thin. Although I feel like thinness is more of a marketing gimmick than something actually useful. But I mean, it's pretty cool. So now let's flip these iPads over and take a look at the display. With the 2017 and 2020 iPad Pro, the displays are basically the same, with both having 120 hertz LCD, except that the 2020 has rounded corners and e even bezels, which makes it a lot nicer to view. But with the 2024 iPad Pro, this is where things get interesting. Apple introduced their new tandem OLED display, which they dual stack two OLEDs together, making the display much brighter, the colors pop a lot more, and it just gives it these really deep blacks that gives it a really cinematic viewing experience. Now that we know how these iPads look, how do they actually perform? Well, here's the Geekbench scores on screen, and as you can see, the 2024 iPad Pro is much more powerful. That's because it uses Apple's brand new M4 chip, which is actually a laptop and desktop processor, but it's built into an iPad, so it can handle basically anything you throw at it. The 2020 iPad Pro, the A12Z, is still a decent chip for an iPad and will handle mo most iPad tasks and will, st will still work fine. Whereas with the older iPad, with the A10, it's still starting to show its age and some apps might lag and it not run as well. So I tested the web browsing speed and Wi-Fi speed on all of them and it seems like with the 2024 iPad Pro, with the M4, it's just going to be a lot snappier and it got higher scores than the rest of them. But with the older iPad Pro, it's really starting to show its age and web browsing is going to be a lot slower and laggier. And last but not least, let's compare the Apple Pencils. So with the original Apple Pencil, it actually had a pretty strong start with it being pressure sensitive, higher quality, and great tracking. The, o the only downside is, is it charges with a lightning port, which makes it really annoying to use. And with the 2020 Apple Pencil, the drawing experience is mostly the same, except it got a big design update and magnetic charging, which makes it a lot easier to use. And with their newest Apple Pencil, they basically just refined the features of the last one, except adding features like squeeze, rotate, du double tap, and hover. So in conclusion, what are my thoughts on these iPad Pros? Well, they've definitely changed a lot over time, as we can see, but from here, what are they gonna actually do with them? Cause they've already got a great display, great performance, there's not much you can go from here. So if you're thinking of buying an iPad Pro right now and you do a lot of processor heavy tasks and you just want the best of the best, the iPad Pro M4 will give you that. Its display is so good and it gives you this really cinematic experience. Its processor is top of the line and it's got this really modern design. But the thing is for 90% of people, they don't actually need the performance and hardware that comes with the M4 iPad Pro. So if that's the case, then get this or the M1 iPad Pro. That'll still be really good and future-proofing and it'll be a lot cheaper since it's a little bit older model and you can get, get it refurbished. But the thing is, it'll still be a really good iPad and it will be good for drawing, web browsing, video editing, anything you want. And as for the 2017 iPad Pro, well, um, yeah, it's, it, it's had its run. Mm -hmm.